Today, we're going to take a look at Pulse One Cloud. The features discussed today will also apply to Pulse One on prem, though the on prem version has a few additional features not discussed here. We will look at how the admin can bring a current PCS or PPS appliance into the Pulse One management console. We'll look at the ability to manage appliance configurations. And lastly, we'll look at, at the different dashboards that are available. First, you can see an architecture diagram that shows where Pulse One fits into the overall Pulse Secure deployment. We're going to log into the Pulse One admin console here using Enterprise SSO, which is a SAML integrated uh, option, which uh, allows you to use a PCS appliance as the authentication mechanism. I'm already logged into the PCS appliance, so my SSO will kick in and it takes me right in with my actual admin account. First, take a look at appliances, and this is where you'll add a new appliance. So first, as an admin, click add, label the appliance you want to add, make note of the registration host, you'll use this in the next step, and then copy the registration code. Now we log into the PCS appliance to be registered as an admin. Navigate to System, Configuration, Pulse One Settings. Put in that registration host noted on the previous step. And then the registration code. So we save changes, it'll kick the registration process off. It is now communicating between PCS appliance out to the cloud, Pulse One appliance. Registration process has completed with that refresh. And we can see both the registration status and notification channel are active because these lights are green. And when we go back to the Pulse One dashboard, we'll also see that the appliance that we added has a connected status. Next, we'll take a look at configuration groups. Config groups allow the administrator to share specific configuration settings between appliances. The idea is that you have a master appliance and one or more sub appliances or child appliances in which you can automatically share any settings between the group. This allows the admin to automatically update the master and have all those updates automatically pushed to the child appliances. Initially, we will create a new group, give it a name, and we'll select the master appliance. Make note that the appliances in the group need to be running the exact same version of PCS or PPS in order to be part of the group. And then here's where you select the exact settings that you want to share inside the group. You don't have to select everything and settings that would create conflicts like uh, some networking settings that would be an IP address that has to be unique. Some of those settings are not available in here for obvious reasons, uh, but the settings that are available, it's fairly complete and you can choose exactly which setting, object, setting objects to share. And the master appliance would then become the, the point where any settings that change could be then transferred to all those sub appliances. We'll just share the defaults, finish. Now we have a group with a master and now we can add the, the secondary appliances or the child appliances. Here we see two available appliances. If you noticed on the previous screen in the appliance uh, tab, there was about five or six appliances on the, on the deployment, but these are the ones with the matching version that I have available to share. So I can add the ones I want to add. And now I have two child appliances. So anytime, a setting that is being watched on the master appliance changes, the admin will have the ability to push the setting change to all the child appliances. And on the other end of it, if the child appliance has any setting changed that is being watched by the master, it will ask the admin if it wants to revert that change on the child appliance. So it goes both ways and it allows an admin to do easy configurations to things like resource policies, authentication servers, whatever it may be, they can make that change in one single place and push it to all their additional appliances all at once. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at the dashboards. 
we have a main dashboard screen that shows the overall view of the deployment in full. Um, the appliances, some uh, versionings that are that are installed on the on the different PCS and PPS appliances, uh, very high level. And then we can go into analytics and get more detailed logs. We can select individual appliances, multiple appliances. Here we're just going to look at one at a time. Uh, and you can see authentication results, failed and success, what type of devices are logging in, uh, what type of mechanism they're using, just a graph of their attempts, uh, some more information about it. Appliance health, if you look at an individual appliance, you can see stuff like CPU utilization, memory, network throughput, disk utilization, see if they're reaching a, a critical point, if they're being used uh, or not. You can get the raw data itself, export that data for further analysis. And then appliance activities, any uh, critical error messages that may be being thrown out from a PCS appliance. Here you see Active Directory authentication has failed. An administrator needs to rejoin the domain, something that an admin would definitely want to know as if users were trying to log into this appliance, they would be uh, getting a failed message because it cannot contact the Active Directory. Uh, so it's a good place to, to get a full view uh, of any critical errors that may be a, that may be happening outside of your on your deployment uh, without logging into each individual appliance uh, individually. Uh, thank you. This concludes the demo of Pulse One Cloud covering appliance registration, configuration sharing, and basic dashboard views.